Let's start this video by taking a look at how to replace this oil pump oil seal also known as the crankshaft snout oil seal you could also call it a geo rotor oil pump front seal that's this here this is not your typical gear type oil pump it's known as a geo rotor oil pump these oil pump was first introduced around 1986 1987 the first place i saw these pumps were in the buick 3800 engine and some of the honda engine the problem with those engines is was the gear type oil pump would lose oil pressure before a hundred thousand miles which was not very ideal for factory warranty. So this pump was developed to maintain oil pressure past 100,000 miles certifying factory warranty, which mean the manufacturer did not have to replace these pump like the gear type oil pump during the course of a warranty. Now you have to understand back then warranty was approximately 100,000 miles or 10 years. So in a gear type oil pump, that pump will fail at approximately 50, 60,000 miles and within five to six years. So Buick and Honda introduced this pump, which is mounted as you can see on the front of the crankshaft. The crankshaft drives this pump. It has a rotor on the inside and a ring on the outside for producing oil pressure. So that oil pressure comes up from this side here, or this side, I'm gonna take a look at it later, and then it's pressure in here, and then it sends to the filter, and then it goes back this way into the engine block. Well, this is the oil seal we want to replace, and it goes something like this, but you just can't force that in there a special technique another thing that you need to know about this pump is that at the rear of the seal it will have pressure or sometime as the pump get old it will leak pressure to the rear of the seal if the seal is bad that oil will eventually leak its way into this area here onto the timing belt once that oil saturate the timing belt the timing belt will become damaged, it could snap, wear out, and cause the engine to not start. So now that this oil pump is over 100,000 miles, this physical oil pump is 210,000 miles, and it's approximately 25 years old. So replacing this seal just like that is not enough. In the cavity over here, there's a passageway that has to be cleaned out. Because when that oil pressure is built behind the seal, that passageway will send that oil pressure or that oil seepage down into the oil pan. If that passageway is blocked or clogged with sludge or deposits, that pressure will maintain in this cavity and eventually pass the seal and end up in this area here, saturating the timing belt, causing it to break prematurely. So what we want to do is we want to take a wire like this and we just want to feel our area back here. There's going to be a hole that you could pass this wire to all the way down for clearing that passageway. Let's take a look at another angle of this. Here you can see I have the wire in my hand with my finger and I just want to go up and down in that hole let's get a closer look at that so you can see where that hole is right there that is the hole for relieving the pressure or oil seepage that will build up behind the seal like I mentioned now once you pass the wire in there you also want to get some brake cleaner or some spray and just flush out that hole. 
this will be the best application for blowing some pressure into there with a cleaner just flushing all that carbon and any blockage let's take a look at the rear of the oil pump that will be that oil pump down here in its brand new application so when you're going to be installing this pump you will have to take this cover off and all the screws that are holding it in position because the internal of the pump in here will have to be packed with Vaseline this way when the engine is start the pump will be able to suck that oil up from the pickup over here bringing it up for producing oil pressure into the engine well as we can see here what inside of the pump look like it's not really a gear it's more of a wobble wheel and the crankshaft turned this interior this inner wobble gear and in doing so it spins this outer one so what will happen here this crankshaft will turn in that direction bringing the oil up from the pickup right here into this cavity and sending it into this area here for oil pressure into these areas for it to enter the engine. Now, I want to turn this pump around and take a look at the front to show you that cavity that was just cleaned behind the oil seal. That's this hole right here. This is where the pressure from the oil seal in the event the pump should produce that pressure to the front of the oil seal it will be relieved from that hole right there this is the face of the oil pump like you see before now that's the hole right there that we're pushing this wire through and you see the wire comes out on the bottom there that passageway is for relieving any pressure that seeped by this rotor towards the seal. Now understand this pump is pressure rise when the RPM gets up. Approximately every thousand RPM the pump will produce approximately 10 PSI. So that excess pressure that seeped by from this rotor will eventually escape from here preventing it from seeping by the seal entering into this cavity for damaging the timing belt. That's the most important part you need to know. Now let's go back and take a look at installing this oil seal into the front of the pump. Let's install this oil seal. I want to use this wire. Sometimes it's best to use a toothpick or a wooden pick because the wire could puncture the rubber in the event of installing it. So we want to place the seal up against the cavity we just want to put that wire in there and walk the seal, walk the wire around the lip of the seal so it could get onto that ledge where it's sealing. Now we want to take it out and make sure we take a look at it because we really don't want this wire to puncture the lip of the seal. Once that seal is fitted, you will be able to look at where the mating surface is against the crankshaft for a unified look. Then we can use this PVC pipe, it's approximately two and a half inch, 
just want to push it in so it sits beyond the contour of this metal surface you just want it to be exact now you're going to know when this seal is properly installed because you want to get that feel for it that it's fitting exactly against this flat surface you want to make sure it's flat when you rub your fingers like that you must feel even with this outside surface these two guide plates one is for the outside one is for the inside you will look at the trace to know which way it fits so we can see this is bracing against the timing sprocket and this side goes up against the seal so you just want to fit this onto the crankshaft and when you rotate it you want to make sure it's seated against the crankshaft metal this surface here for the metal you don't want it to drag itself on the back of the seal it should drag against this here this metal surface here on the crankshaft not here and not here so when we place this on you can see it's perfect because when we rotate it we can tell that it's contacting on the crankshaft so we'll place this in position we'll take a look at our crankshaft sprocket this side go on the inside this is on the outside because we have our timing mark right here so let's get this on here this one here is for the outside so these are the two guide plates for keeping the timing belt onto the sprocket now let's continue the video by installing the timing belt that will be in another video